Hey everyone, this is Miss Carrie from Bible Class. Um, I'm teaching fifth graders, so if that's you, then today we're going to be learning about Jesus and who He is. In the fifth grade, we've always, um, I've always tried to make fifth grade about um, Jesus. I solely focus on Jesus because there's so much to cover, and I still cannot cover it in just one school year. But uh, maybe through the videos that we can we can um, learn a little bit more than what I usually do in just class time. So I'm really excited to be teaching this. I love, 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 I love teaching about the Bible, but I love teaching about Jesus um, because he is just so important to us and, um, and to our salvation. And um, so I hope and pray that you guys will really enjoy this and um, find it in, 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 not only interesting, but spiritually life-changing. Um, I know that he certainly has changed my life, and um, I hope that he will do the same for you, too. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, I am going to start off with just a quick prayer. Um, we always want to invite Jesus in, invite God into our into our lessons, and into everything that we're doing. Um, I encourage you to start your day with him when you wake up in the mornings. He's, he's always there, and he wants to be involved in our days, so let's get going. Um, if you want to bow your head and pray, that's great. If you don't, that's okay, too. Not a biggie. Let's get going. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you do, Lord. We thank you for being involved in our lives and wanting to bless us and wanting to be a part of our lives, Lord, and that you've given us the way to do that, even though that we're sinners and you've, you've already fixed that problem and given us the answer through Jesus. And uh, Lord, we're going to be learning about you. We're going to be learning about you today, Lord. So I ask that you uh, just bless this lesson lesson and, and, and help us to um, learn your truths in the way that you would have us to learn and let it be very understandable <laughs> for those who are listening. Um, thank you, Lord, for all your provisions and for how you love us and um, provide for us in all different ways, um, from our daily needs of food and water and clothing and shelter to, to our salvation um, through you. And so, Lord, I ask that you would bless and keep all the viewers who are with us today, um, whether it be children, adults, teenagers, whoever it may be, I ask that you would bless and keep them and... Um, Father, protect us as we go through this time of the pandemic um, of COVID and even end of flu season. I ask that you would just watch over, our, watch over our community and our nation as we go through this. And Lord, we just love you and we thank you for all that you do. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, so here we go. Now, I am going to tell you that what you're going to learn today is, it, it might, it'll be a little mind-boggling. Um, I know as a young Christian, you know, 30 years ago for me, um, almost 30 years ago, it was, it, it's hard to just take everything in at one time, and that's okay. Um, one of the things that I do encourage young believers and young Christians is just to be patient, because um, learning to, learning about God takes a lifetime, and it takes experience um, of living life. It takes um, letting God talk with you, it takes, it, it just doesn't happen overnight. So don't be too especially hard on yourself if you don't understand everything. It's okay because one of the things that God, that what the Bible tells us is that God is a mystery, um, but he's not unknowable, okay? We, um, God, we can't possibly know all God, all of God, Okay. He's given us enough to what we can handle and have a relationship with him. With him, and, um, and and the rest we have to go on faith, okay? Because God is so big and so amazing that our I don't think our minds can really comprehend His greatness and the extent and and um, of how huge He really is, okay? In His nature. Um, but we do, we can learn what he's given us in his, in, in his word. And we can trust that, okay? Now, it, like I said, it's okay if, if a lot of this doesn't really want to click in your mind, okay? It, it's, it's okay. Um, like I said, time with time and your continual relationship with him, he helps you to understand it. And one day it just, things just click. But he, it takes time. So be patient in your faith. Be patient in God and wait for Him because um, He likes patience. Patience is a good thing. You know, people say patience is a virtue. Um, patience is a wonderful thing and it's a blessing. And God works in His timing. So don't be, 
Don't be too anxious to say, well, I don't get this, and then just dismiss it. Just be patient and let him work with you, okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about today, the main thing I want, the question I want to ask you is, Jesus, who is he? Who is Jesus? Now, it, you know, if, I, if you were in my class and I would say, okay, guys, who is Jesus? Everybody's probably going to say, oh, that's God's son. Um, you know, the son of God. He died for us on the cross. And, you know, that's, that is true. But I want to get down deep. I want to dig deeper into who Jesus is. And I've given, I've got a lot of Bible references on here. And this may look like, oh my gosh, Miss Carrie, this is so boring. But I hope you'll stick with me and just listen. And, uh, and listen to what God tells us because what he tells us in his word is so exciting and it's so, such a blessing, okay? So um, we're going to find out who Jesus is. Now, this is only going to just be the tip of the iceberg. I cannot possibly, um, in one video, two videos, even three or four videos, go into detail of who Jesus is because he is so deep and vast. It's amazing, okay? But I can give you a start. And that's why it's important for us to dig into his word and, and let him teach us. Because that's what he's doing. He's revealing himself in his word. Now, we do know from what God tells us in the Bible that Jesus, first of all, is God's son. Okay, we do know that. But before I go any further into that, I want to look up here. And I don't know if you can see it very well. And um, this is this, this uh, what I'm going to talk about right here, this, this one little area is referred to, a lot, um, a lot of different denominations refer to it as the Holy Trinity um, or the Trinity or the Triune God. Tri means three, okay? And this is a biblical principle. This comes from the Bible. This is not people coming up with this idea. This is biblical, okay? And you're going to say, but I thought there's only one God. You're right. There is only one God, okay? But we also have to understand that our one God works as three different units, or we sometimes call it three persons, okay? And we have these three that do different things and accomplish God's ultimate will for everything, okay? And we have to have all three in order for God to work. And I know that sounds a little weird, but just trust me on this. Just go with me, okay? Just go with me. All right, so first we have God the Father. That's the head of the triangle. That's the, that's the first, the first person, okay? God the Father, all right? Then we have God the Son, all right? Who is the Son? Jesus, the second person of the triune God, or the second um, part of our triune God, okay? It means tri means three as one, okay? Um, then we have the third one, who is the Holy Spirit, or sometimes referred to as the Holy Ghost, okay? And he's the third person. Now, when I say he, I mean he, because that's what the Bible tells us, okay? He, all right? Now, each one of these work together to accomplish one ultimate goal, okay? And that is, number one, to bring us home to him, all right? So we have God the Father, and even Jesus the Son, answers to the Father, okay? Without Jesus, we could not have salvation because Jesus had to leave heaven because Jesus has always been with God the Father. He had to leave heaven at one point in history to come into time as we know it and become a human being in order to become the perfect sacrifice or the perfect substitution so that we can be freed from our sin. Now, we'll get into that later. Don't, don't be overwhelmed right now, okay? Just hang loose with me, all right? So he is our second person, Jesus, all right? Now, I'll get heard of the Holy Spirit. Now, we have to have the Holy Spirit because Jesus, as a man, could not, cannot be with us on this earth with, with all of us at the same time, okay? So when Jesus, after Jesus, and we're going to get into this later into the year, Jesus had it on the cross. We've talked about that, or you've heard that, I'm sure. And after he died, he was buried, and then three days later, he came back to life, right? And then after that, he ascended into heaven to be back with the Father. But he told his disciples, or the people that followed him, before he left earth, okay, he didn't die again. He actually literally went up in the air, went back to the Father, okay? 
Um, but before he left, he told his disciples, the people that follow him, he said, you know, I must go away so the Father can send the Holy Spirit. Now, this is very important. So when Jesus went back to heaven, and let me reinstate this, Jesus is still alive today, and he will be coming back at some point because the Bible tells us so, all right? He is alive and with the Father right now, all right? But so after he went to heaven, okay, went back to the Father, he is alive, all right? The Father then sent the Holy Spirit to indwell all believers, so when the Bible tells us that God lives in us, that when we accept him, when we accept Jesus as our Savior and give our lives to him and make him Lord of our life, then the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, comes and indwells us. And he is referred to as the helper, too. So as believers, we're not left to figure it out on our own. The Holy Spirit actually comes and lives in our hearts, okay? And he helps us, God helps us through his Holy Spirit to accomplish the things that he would have us do, to live the way he would have us to live, because we can't do it on our own. We're sinful human beings, okay? We have sin problems. But the Holy Spirit helps us to overcome those things when we trust in him and lean on him and depend on him. Who is God, okay? That's, we're, we're talking to God. And he's like a communicator, too. The Holy Spirit can think... I, I know that when I've prayed, um, sometimes I've been so... I'm distraught in my heart and in my mind. I couldn't even speak when I tried to pray. And so the Holy Spirit, I could, you know, I could just sense the Holy Spirit praying for me. And that's biblical. I mean, that's in the Bible. And so he's like a communicator as well. All right. And then Jesus is the mediator that goes between us and the Father. All right. And I know this seems all overwhelming, but it's really, really an important thing that we need to learn. Because if, if you don't, then you you tend to get confused, okay, and saying, well, is Jesus God? Was the Holy Spirit God? They are all God. They are all three to make one, okay? And, and if, you, if you want to compare it to something, maybe that would help you to understand. If you think about it, let's look at water, okay? What different forms does water come in? One, a gas, vapor. Um, when you look up in the sky and you see clouds, um, that's water. Okay, it's just in a gaseous, gaseous form. But then when those clouds become full, what happens? They become full and then they start dripping, okay? And that's where we get our rain from. And so we've got the liquid state of, wa of water. And then we also have frozen. So, you know, when it freezes outside and, you know, you're slipping around on the ice out in your driveway, you know, that's a solid, okay? But it's all water. It's all the same thing, just different forms, okay? So you can kind of relate that to the way God works in this trinity that we are talking about, okay? So I wanted to make this clear before I moved on to um, Jesus any further, okay? And I hope, I hope that helps. I really do. Um, so one of the things I want to show you, and like I said, this is not going to be all of it, but these are going to be the important things I want to hit on um, in, in leading us into our study about Jesus. Um, first of all here, he is the son of God. He is literally God's son, okay? And we have lots and lots of scripture that backs that up. Um, we, can, we know that um, God calls him his son, all right? Um, right here it says, who was declared, this is in Romans Chapter 1, verse 4. Who was declared the Son? Wait a minute. Who was declared the Son of God um, by the resurrection from the dead according to the Spirit? Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? So he was declared the Son of God from God. I mean, God told him, this is the Son of God. Okay? Um, we also have Matthew. When Jesus, which we're going to learn about later on, when Matthew, I mean, shoot. Sorry, when Jesus was going to be baptized by John, now baptism, of course, is being dunked under the water, and we're, when we give our lives to the Lord, it's a symbol, it's symbolic of us um, giving our lives to God, okay? And it's something that, you know, God requires, okay? It's, and he says, after Jesus was baptized, he come up out of the water, and it's, it says in the Bible that um, God, in an audible voice, and a lot of people heard it. John the Baptist heard it, and the people who were gathered there at the river being baptized heard it. And so 
when when he come up out of the water in Matthew 3 17 it says behold this is my son with whom I am well pleased so God is letting everybody know who was there watching him be baptized this is my son and I'm very very pleased with what he's doing okay so we do know that God in many, in many, many scriptures in the Bible tells us that he is his literal son, his only begotten son, okay? Um, in John 3.17, or th John 3.16, I'm sure that's, that's a very, very popular um, Christian um, verse in the Bible. Um, it's, it's the ground, it's the rock that we build our faith on, okay? Uh, John 3.16 says for... Um, let me go ahead and read it out of here. Forgive me, I thought I had my Bible ready here. Um, sorry. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, will not perish. That means will not be separated from him, okay? But will have eternal life, okay? That means you get to be with him for eternity. Now, that might be a little bit, a little bit mind-blowing, but it's the truth, and there's a lot of cool things waiting for us there in eternity. So, um, but here he says, for God gave his only begotten son. God here is telling us who he is, what he came for, what he's done, in order for us not to be separated from him. Okay, that we can have um, everlasting life with God through Jesus. Very, very important. Okay, so we've got all those, all of those scriptures stating that the Son of God, that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, plus there's many, many more in the Bible. All right, the second one I want you to know of and be aware of is that um, Jesus has always been with God. You know. We have to understand that with God, there is no beginning, there is no end, okay? Um, he is an infinite deity or being, okay? He's not like us, flesh and blood, like, like we are. Now, Jesus is, okay? Jesus is flesh and blood. He is in a glorified body right now, but um, which means a, a body that will never die or get sick or be harmed again, okay? But um, God is, and, and Jesus as well, he is an infinite being, okay? Infinite being forever. And so that's mind-boggling, I know. Just hang in there with me. Okay, but he's always been with God. Even before he came to earth and became a man, he was always with God. How do we know? Because the Bible tells us. Now I've got to find my scripture here. It says, um, oh, goodness sakes. Right here in John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh. Now Jesus has always been referred to as the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was the with God, and the Word was God. That's talking about Jesus, okay? But also in John 14, and the Word became flesh. That means Jesus left the glories of heaven. He came to earth. He actually become a human being and dwelt among us, okay? He dwelt among us, and he saw his, or, and we saw his glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth, okay? So that scripture tells us He's always been, and he always will be, that he was with God before, and he came and became a man, and then after that, he came, he, he, he was resurrected, and then was raised into heaven, okay? So he's always been, he's there now, he's waiting to come back, because we do know that um, one day he's going to reign as king. He's going to be our king, literal king, and so I'm just so excited. I get as excited when I talk about prophecy like that, but we're not going to go into that today. All right, so we do know that he's always been, all right? He always been, has been, he always will be. He is an infinite God, all right? And Jesus is part of that infinite God. All right, number three, he is Savior. Big, big, big thing. This is what's most important, okay? He is our Savior. Now, what is he saving us from? Have you ever thought about that? You know, we hear Jesus is our Savior. We hear that Jesus saves. You know, you'll see signs, Jesus saves, or... Um, you'll hear somebody say, I got saved at church the other day. Um, what is he saving us from? Have you ever thought about that? All right, he's saving us from what? Sin. All right, sin is this ugly stuff that, that we all have as human beings. Even Miss Carrie, um, your mom, dad, you know, whoever, 
Um, people have people are sinful. Period. There is no one, no one, not even the best preacher, not even the most godliest person you could think of. No one is without sin. Everybody has it. Therefore, all of us need saving. Okay, because what does sin do? Hmm. And I don't have any room on my board, but we'll try it maybe down here. Um, let me tilt my camera down just a little bit. Okay. If you can see here, this is us. Let's say this is us over here, okay? We're this red dot. Then we're standing on this cliff over here, all right? And we're the sinful people. Now, when I talk about sin, what is sin? Sin is any disobedience to God. Any. You have types of sin, like lying, stealing, cheating. Um, those are types of sins. But sin is any, any disobedience to God. Any. So therefore, we've all been disobedient, even miscarried. And, you know, some of the best preachers you thought. We're all, we all 